In this video, you're going to learn how to apply window perforation to the free floating windows of Ford cargo vans. And these have fasteners, and you'll see how to do it with and without. In this case, we're going to start with without. And the best way to take them off is just by loosening the bolts. And they're generally held on by bolts behind, and there's four of them. And you know, your first thought is well, if I take off all the bolts, then it's going to the window's going to fall off on the workspace floor. But luckily, this window is held on with double-sided tape as well. So you can take off these fasteners without worrying about any kind of damage to the window. And now that it's taken off, first thing you do is you clean. Again, lots of dirt behind these fasteners, so you, as soon as you remove them, you clean. Never clean, remove the fasteners, then apply the window perforation because some of that dirt will get on behind the perf. You want to make sure the edges are super, super, super clean. That's the critical area. And with this kind of small window, you know, I'm a big fan of using temporary hinges to secure the panel to release the backing paper. But because this area is so small, for me, I like to go what I call cowboy and remove the entire backing paper and then just set the perforation on. I find this a little easier. But if you want to set up a hinge, go for it, a temporary hinge. But then you always want to set up that permanent hinge, pull the window perforation back to the permanent hinge, pull up with glass, and then squeegee methodically up to the top and you're going to do the same thing for the bottom. And again, the window perforation in this case is laminated and I highly recommend laminating window perforation. Just makes it easier to install, keeps it from scratching, better long-term durability. If moisture builds up on the window perforation, the lamination layer will have the will keep the the moisture out of the holes. So the client can always see out of the window perforation if it's laminated. So now that the window perforation is on, you want to remove the excess film. So you click your knife so it's super, super sharp. And then what you're going to do is you want to, again, the tip of the knife is a maybe a click out. Super, super shallow. Because if it's held out long, it's going to cut the body of the vehicle there. So, but if it's, you keep it short, there's no way it can touch the inside body here. And now what the critical thing is, you with any kind of free floating window, you angle your blade in towards the window, all right? Because the edge here is beveled, which means it angles in, and it also is frosted on the side. So if you have any kind of excess film hanging over the side of a free floating window, it's not going to stick. So again, you have to angle your blade in, super critical. And again, good hand position here. Don't force, cut away from yourself. Always cut to yourself. And then I'm angling my blade in. And again, try to be methodical here. Slow down on the corners so your knife doesn't jump off. And then once you get on the straight section, you can go a little faster. And once you cut all the excess film away, always be careful when you're removing window perforation as it's fragile. And now that it comes off super clean. Now you want to cut the excess film away from the holes where the fasteners go. And again, this can just be a basic cut. It doesn't have to be angled in towards the window if you don't want to because the fastener is going over top. The fastener will keep the edges from being exposed to water and chemicals and stuff like that. So it doesn't have to be a perfect cut, but just good enough that the fastener can go back on top. So now the fastener goes over the top here. And once you get them all in, again, just simply reattach the bolts. Super easy. So again, obviously taking the fasteners off makes putting these windows on super, super, super easy. But now I want to show you how to wrap these windows if you can't take the fasteners off. All right, what you want to do is squeeze in a paper towel, and you want to clean the edge of the fastener, super, super clean. All right, these have a lot of oil and dirt from the molding that's behind uh, behind them, and then you want to make sure the edge is super clean as well. So again, clean the base 100% of each fastener, and then clean the edge of the window perforation. And now you got this panel again. Again, you can either set up a temporary hinge or go cowboy. I'm not wearing a cowboy hat. I'm just kind of going cowboy in style. Pull off the backing paper here. Nice and easy. Super small window. Flip it around. And again, if you're registering any images and stuff like that, line it up. And then make your permanent hinge. And again, this is laminated. It doesn't have the air egress or reposition ability, so if you try to squeegee and it's not properly set up, you're going to get a lot of bubbles here. So once you get, create your glass, you can easily work it up. Now to work around the fasteners, you want to use that triangle approach where you squeegee away from the sides 
and then the section behind the fastener in the middle will not be bunched up with wrinkles. Now the two fasteners generally on the left have some space so you can kind of trap it completely where it's where it's there. The fasteners on the right are really close to the edge so you don't want to force it. Now here's a technique that I don't recommend for these type of fasteners is to poke a hole at the bottom and then heat it. I see this a lot. You heat it and then kind of form the window perforation to the base of the fastener. Now what you're doing here is window perforation generally doesn't like to stretch at all. So now what you're doing here at a critical section is you stretch and heat the film. You're distorting the holes and you're stretching the film and then you cut the excess film away. And it's going to look good for maybe a day. And then what's going to happen is the window perforation is going to start shrinking because of the memory and you're going to get fingers here at the base. All right, so you definitely, definitely, definitely don't want to use this approach. And again, it's tempting to do, and it's kind of fun to do, but the thing is, it's just not going to stay long term. All right, so this is n this is a very good example of how not to apply this area. Now, the best way to apply this area is you want to make one of, while the material is bridging the fastener, is you want to click your knife so it's super sharp, and you want to make a relief cut. All right, and you're going to have your edge of your blade simply follow the edge of the fastener. All right, And this is kind of a tricky cut. You want to go slow, have a super short tip here, not too long of a blade, and so it's just simply going to hug the edge. And because it's curved the whole time, you just want to go super slow. But if you go slow, it'll hug that edge. And the knife is really tempting to jump. It wants to jump out into the middle of the window. So take your time here. But once you make that cut and you make it complete, and it can be totally symmetrical to the fastener is now look how easy the material tucks in and as it tucks in there is no tension there and this is extremely critical right so the holes don't distort in size but more importantly it's going to lay flat on this area and again for these kind of fasteners because they're plastic I generally remove the excess window perforation on top because window again window perforation doesn't like to be on curved surfaces and this is a low surface energy area so again it's best to remove that and again this coat uh, same on this side. Instead of trapping the completely around the fastener here, what you want to do is you want to make that relief cut right away. So don't try to force the material onto the window on the right hand side. Make your relief cut and then it's simply going to fall onto the window with no tension. So really important here to do that. See how it just glides right in, no tension, using the hard part of the squeegee to tuck it in nice and clean. And generally, if you do it right, you're gonna have to go. You don't have to go back and clean up the base. And then again, remove the the, the material on the fastener. If there's a, any kind of excess film here, you can kind of clean it up away. And again, this is essentially a tuck and cut method. So you tucked it into the base and then you cut it away, so it's nice and clean. And again, here's an example of how not to cut away the free floating window. See how the knife, <coughs> the angle of the blade here is face, facing away from the edge of the free floating window. Okay, And it makes for a decent cut. I mean it looks symmetrical and stuff like that. But the problem is there's about I would say about two or three millimeters of film hanging off the edge. Okay, And the problem with that, see that right there? The problem with that is that dirt and water chemicals can get behind the edge there and then over time really quickly the window perforation is going to come loose at the edges. So again now I'm cutting it the correct way by angling the blade in towards the window perforation. I mean sorry, angling my blade in towards the window and that removes this little section here and that will keep the window perforation totally flat onto the surface. You can see the beveled edge and the frosted side there but now because angling my blade in it lays perfectly flat on the window. Some manufacturers, and this is good for you to know, is require you to cut the film away about maybe three to four millimeters or maybe like an eighth of an inch in towards the window. So you're going to leave a gap on the side of any kind of window. And this is for free floating or for roll up windows. And then what they then ask you to do is go back with a uh, almost like a lamination tape and then seal the edge. Right, so again, check with your manufacturer, whoever is guaranteeing the window perforation. Some manufacturers are cool if you angle your blade in towards the window and just simply cut it flat to the edge and then you edge seal it or some manufacturers want you to put that
tape down now and do it this approach. And again, there's special tools that can help you cut that straight, but again, check with your manufacturers for window perforation. And now the wrap up. Again, if you can remove those fasteners, by all means do so. It makes it super easy to wrap, flat surface, wham bam, get it on, move on to the next window. Awesome. If you can't remove it, definitely do the relief cut. Don't poke a hole and stretch it in. Make the relief cut, let the material relax into that area, and then you're good to go. Uh, when you're cutting the excess film away from the sides, again, keep that blade super, super short so you don't cut the body of the vehicle. I see that way too often. And then always when you remove the excess film away from the edges, always, always edge seal. Okay, this is really critical for long-term durability. Thanks for watching. I'm Justin Payton. Huh?